Welcome to today's episode of I Have a Bunch of Junk in My Basement. The rules are simple. Take the junk, get rid of it. filling the dumpster again and sorry dad I had to throw away your slippers because mice got inside of them and then they pooped all over sorry Ooh, watch your head ta-da looks a lot better I'm starting to learn unless something is a really really good tool that I 1000% going to use and it's something we need I'm just going off the notion I'm gonna get rid of it now because all of the stuff that was laying over here was stuff that Neva and I had already sorted through and we're like oh we want this stuff this is good stuff and then it sits here for two years and then we come back to it again and we look at it and we were like why did we keep any of this now one of these days when I get a wild hair all of these old pipes that used to be off the old cistern this is the cistern we don't use the cistern anymore because we have everything off rural water, which is that blue line that comes in, which comes in from over there in the corner. I don't know if we can see it from here. Is it behind the pole? Yeah, right there. But all that stuff is not used anymore, so I need to tear that out. I'm going to tear this old ceiling stuff out because we're running off old electricity down here. The old knob and tube wiring, which is not safe. There's a few old pipes and stuff especially over in this room that we just don't use anymore. Old electricity lines, once again, the wood. I just want it to look like this, where we're looking at the bottom of the floor in the floor joists. We got all the scrub stuff gone out of here in the trash. That way we have room where we can start working. I want to put in a heated floor in the house so we want access to the floor joists. I want to put in new electricity in the house so we'll eventually be ripping all of this stuff out. I mean, that's not, not sketchy at all. Oh, you want to know what's not sketchy at all? Check out this one back here. This is probably the most up-to-code thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Right there. Incredible. Back when this house was built in 1917, they had a cistern right outside that window, and that fed a well in the basement. So then that well pumped water up through the wall over into this other room and that is what that ginormous black tank back there is it's for the water pressure system i don't really want that in here anymore it's huge that thing is this room is probably 14 feet wide i, I bet that's a 13 foot long by three and a half foot tall tank Thing's a monster. I don't want it in here. We're basically tearing everything out and starting over down here. Bare ceiling, bare floor. And check this one out. I have a furnace and a boiler. The boiler is what heats the radiators. This furnace just bled out right into this room. <laughs> it was only used to heat the basement, which funny enough, this hasn't worked for like 15 years. But the boiler, these pipes run hot water through them. It's actually the, the warmest room of the house is the basement. It's kind of interesting. So we don't need this in here anymore. Tear that out. Also looks like back here in the creepy interrogation room, we have these floor jack things that are holding up a board. It appears that the floor was maybe sagging a little bit right there. So I don't know if we need to do a little bit of rebuilding right there. I don't think that's what I want to do as a permanent fix. We can probably get those windows sealed up because that's under the porch. So we don't need that there. Then we'll be able to clean all the walls, paint everything white, get it really bright down here. We'll get the floor epoxy guys to come in. We'll get everything sand down on the floor, seal up all the cracks and stuff. And they'll pour their epoxy, put new lights down here so it'll be bright, it'll smell good, it'll stay dry. Probably put a couple sump pumps in, speaking of dry. We are on top of a hill, but if you get like a six inch rain just right and the ground's already saturated, you get a couple spots where just a little bit of water creeps in. But I can't say I've really ever seen water in any of this area of the basement or over there in the black tank creepy interrogation room. Just the only spot I've ever seen water is in here, which there's a drain on the other side of the washing machine. And then last but not least, under the entryway behind that little thing, there's actually like a probably three foot tall crawl space that goes up and then L's around the corner. That has a dirt floor to it. And under the stairs also has dirt under there, as we can see. And the mice, for some reason, just think that's an awesome place for a home. So that's where the mice live, is underneath the entryway stairs. So I would like to rip all this stuff out. 
concrete that little crawl space right there as well as concrete underneath the stairs get everything spray foamed on the concrete behind it so that way it stays nice and warm then we can utilize that as a little storage space but also it would keep mice from being able to scurry right through it's a basement that's got a lot of good bones to it but it just needs a little bit of work to get there. We're on a little bit of a time crunch. Scrapyard closes in a little bit. We still gotta get all that junk loaded up into the dump truck, and then we have to drive to the scrapyard. I hope the heater works in this, because it's like 10 degrees out. How does that make sense? I'm holding the choke in, <laughs> and it started right up. When I had it out, it didn't wanna run. I spoke too soon. Nice and warm in here. There's the bucket. Before we drive all the way up there, I'm going to call the scrapyard just to make sure that they are open today. It says so on their website, but sometimes their website's not always right. Hi, Kathy, are you guys taking uh, scrap metal today? Sure. Okay, I'll be there in a little bit then. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, bye. I went up there one time on a Wednesday, I believe. They said, oh, good thing you came today because we weren't open yesterday. The website said they were. Just call ahead. Kathy's a nice lady. I'm not really sure who Kathy is, but she was nice. We are going over where that ginormous cloud of smoke is on the horizon behind my mirror that you can't see. That one, way over there. About our first half mile on the highway, we have flat spots on the tires, and 45 is what I feel comfortable doing. They're talking single digit temperatures for the next week or so, as well as snow. And we have a grave that we need to dig tomorrow. So we need this dump truck empty. Otherwise, if we throw the dirt at the cemetery and it freezes, it'll become just a solid rock and then we won't be able to backfill the grave. So we'll be able to put the dirt in this now, once we get it empty, we'll be able to pull it in the heated shop and then we'll have nice loose soil that we can fill our grave in when we're done digging. Or after the funeral. Now you can see the clouds better. Oh, welcome to the scrapyard. What you got? It's a bunch of bunch of stuff. It's heavy, I know that. We're gonna try to back up right in there. Oh boy, we heavy. I feel like I always dump in the wrong spot when I'm here. Oh man, that is real heavy. much my box is twisted. Make sure we got everything out of the back. Nope. Scrapyard's kind of quiet during the winter time. That's when they're hauling everything out. During the summertime, these piles are like 40 feet tall and there's usually not a whole lot of room to dump. I'm guessing we had 9,400 pounds. Oh, I beat you on the scale. <laughs> 10,300. All right, I was a little off. 7,260 pounds, $508.20. It's gonna go into the Ferrari fund. Wet foot slipped up the clutch. We got Levi coming back now. Hopefully he don't slide off the track. I don't know if you can see it, but the uh, snow is getting really, really packed and it is getting really slick, as you can see. Levi's gonna try to back down the hill. His heart's beating fast. He doesn't know what to do, he's scared. What if he slides off of the cliff? He's thinking, what if I get hung up and I can't get out of here? Will I be sitting here till summertime, till the snow melts? And he's stuck again. 
You remember how I said you pee in front of a semi tire? This is one of them cases right now. So we go down there and see if he's. <laughs> oh, I need a yank. You might not know this, Levi, but you're stuck. <laughs> I kind of gathered that. We're going to hook a chain and then a rope to the telehandler. I'm going to just pull the telehandler real slow and hopefully Levi will come jumping out of the old snow drift. Looks like we are going to do it okay. We're pulling very, very easy. It's not even pulling hard. The main thing is we didn't want to bend up his bumper. All right, let's stop right there. We did her, guys. We got Presley pulling back in now. We'll see how Presley does on getting up the ramp. Look at Presley go. pulling in now but he's gonna come up and down the ramp over to this auger so I'm gonna go start it up to warm up the belt oh we got Cody back now the wind's starting to pick up and it is getting colder luckily we can fill them pretty fast here and then I gotta find some food it's about 2 30 I haven't got to eat yet I'm getting hungry coming back the last load he got stuck going up the hill I bet he's gonna give it everything he's got this time he'll probably come around the corner too fast and jackknife hammer on it punch it there he goes he did it he did it <sighs> good thing we got that door handle fixed I might give him a little shovel on the side there too hopefully that didn't swell up on any of the doors it snowed pretty good the other day and we were able to push in front of this door with the skid loader, but there's still a little bit of snow right here. I think the other side's a little worse. I need to go along underneath this track. I need to make sure that all the snow is out from under there. Otherwise the bottom of the door will push on that snow and then you can't open it. We look forward to the day we get an overhead door over here. That'll be different, that's for sure. gonna take Ford and then I get the dump truck with no heat. <laughs> Cemetery is kind of deep right now. It's a big snow drift on this little bend and then one blocking me off the road so I had to go in through the wrong way in the driveway to actually get in here. We're gonna be digging where the back goes at so I'm gonna grab the skid loader. I gotta clear off a little area right here so I can get the dump truck up there. Yeah, that's deep right there. I think the truck got stuck. It's not good. That snow's deep. Yeah, he's booking right now. I know. As long as the skid loader doesn't get stuck, we'll be okay. I'll trade you spots here for a second. Sounds good to me. Woohoo, we didn't hit the stone. I have a pet peeve. You know when people get in your vehicle and they drive it like three miles and they feel the need to adjust every single mirror. Yes, that's probably the safe thing to do. But it's just like your seat. Like if you can drive the three miles with the settings the way I had them, don't touch the buttons. I'm making a little road trip since Neva wanted to help out today. We just said, hey, why don't we take three vehicles to the cemetery instead of taking the semi with the skid loader in the back oh, and then the dump truck. We can just take the black truck with the skid loader trailer, put the skid loader on that, put the back oh on the semi trailer and take the dump truck. So then I could sneak off while they're digging the grave and go sign these 1096 forms. Our timing was good. Dad and Ava just got done digging the grave right as I pulled back up. We got them loaded up. We're headed back to the main heated shop. Man, who parked the dump truck so far away? Perfect. We'll just put this inside the main heated shop tonight. That dirt that's in there, 
it's got quite a bit of moisture content inside of it so it will just literally hard as a rock you won't be able to touch it until the ground thaws oh hey we just passed over 55,000 miles I steer here. Is this radio work? Be pleased, because I'm not trying Whoa. to break anybody. You I'm kidding me? To have a conversation where you don't want to have it. <laughs> you don't want to have it. Building owner loyalty and discount, Jason. Oh boy. <laughs> don't take out the utility poles, Cole. <laughs> I'd help if I was in the right gear. Ah, now we're stuck. Grind him till you find him. Hey, Ellie Big Belly. What are we doing? Hey. Hey. <laughs> now it's a Friday night. I'm gonna do a little bit of grilling out. Cooper let me borrow his snowmobile. Cooper brought a mountain snowmobile and then he rode it on the trails and was like, well, that's not really a trail sled. So they bought a trail sled for the trails and then the mountain snowmobile for when you're doing the more fun stuff like ramping and big drifts and that kind of thing. So this is Cooper's trail sled. It's 2012, 1500 miles on her. It's four stroke, never ridden a four stroke snowmobile before. This thing has got a heated seat on it, heated bars, heated thumb warmer. Let her warm up a little bit, okay. Good to go. My last snowmobile was a racing snowmobile, so I could do big jumps and stuff with it. It was really fast. This one, I mean, it's flushy. It's nice and smooth. Woo! It's cold. It got real cold. <laughs> these hand guards. A lot different than my old Snow Pro 600 though. I had the cross country racing one. You could go into a ditch on a highway and 80 miles an hour, just whole way. Big choppy bumps, right it out of spots where other snowmobiles tore it up. It didn't matter. You just lean back, punch it. That was a machine. This is a nice machine too, don't get me wrong. It's just this is so flushy, like you turn and the whole machine goes Rah! on that one. It was Okay, that's all we got for today. We'll see you later.